Last week I made a video discussing my experience dual booting Chrome OS and a pure Linux distro on the ASUS C302 Chromebook, which I have over here. As promised in that video, I will be making a tutorial this week about how you can get this sort of dual boot setup going on the ASUS C302 Chromebook. For this tutorial, I'll be installing Galium OS, which is a Ubuntu-based Linux distro that has been optimized to run well with Chromebooks. It works really well with the ASUS C302, something that I mentioned in my previous video, and at least for this specific device, it seems like the best Linux distro to go with for Booting. This video will be geared toward those using the ASUS C302 Chromebook, but the steps described in this tutorial slash video may be applicable to the, to others who are trying to set up dual boot on other Chromebooks that are currently out there. Uh, whether or not your Chromebook is capable of dual booting or is compatible with the steps laid out in this video is very much depending on which Chromebook you own. Uh, you're just gonna have to look into that on your own if you're trying to do this with something that is not an ASUS C302. Be aware that I do not plan to play tech support here and help you figure out whether or not your specific Chromebook is compatible with installing Linux and whatnot. It's too much of a hassle. And honestly, if you can't even figure out that stuff on your own, you really shouldn't be trying to install Linux on a Chromebook. Setting up dual boot and installing a pure Linux OS on a Chromebook is not really geared towards casual users. And I'm not gonna make it seem like it can or should be done by casual users. Something to note, I'm recording this on August 11th, 2021. And the most recent version of Chrome OS in this moment as I record is Chrome OS version 92.0.451. 5.130. I'm noting the date and the version of Chrome OS that I'm currently using here because there is a very legitimate possibility that the tools slash methods used in this video may become outdated with time. A future Chrome OS update may change things in a manner that will effectively break uh, the usability of the aforementioned tools slash methods. Uh, the developer or developers behind the tools I use in this tutorial may stop existing, may stop supporting uh, said tools, etc. Uh, by noting the time frame in which I'm making this video, I hope to address this eventual uh, possibility uh, that this tutorial may not be usable by the time you're watching it. If or when this tutorial becomes outdated, I do intend to edit the video title and the description of this video to reflect that reality. I'll put in something like, oh, outdated method or something like that in the title so people will know not to follow the tutorial anymore, I guess. Uh, but, you know, I might not notice right away that things have become outdated. So all I can really say is I'll do my best in this regard. Now, disclaimer, use the tutorial in this video at your own risk. I am not, I repeat, not responsible for any damages to your machine, any damaged or brick devices that come about as a result of you trying to follow this tutorial is on you. I also will not be responsible with any kind of data loss that you run into either. Installing any kind of new OS and modifying a device's BIOS, which we will be doing in this video, is always risky business. You do this at your own risk. I am not responsible. I am not gonna take responsibility for any sort of damage that occurs on your device as a result of you trying to do what I, what I will demonstrate in this video. With that out of the way, there are a few things I want to let you know of before we go on to the actual tutorial. Firstly, uh, I do have timestamps uh, in the description box of this video. So if you know there's a certain step that you've already done or that you don't really need to get into, uh, you can feel free to skip forward and go to the steps that you need to go to in the video. I don't necessarily recommend that you do this, but I know that some people will be like, hey, you know, this kid's going on about how to turn on developer mode. I already have developer mode turned on. Let's go on to the next step. So, uh, you know, for those people, I have the timestamps in, in the description box, so feel free to use that. And then secondly, I recommend that you watch through this tutorial at least once, read through the websites I have in, this, in the description box and look into any potential questions you may have before actually trying to get a dual boot setup going on your Chromebook. Thirdly, I also recommend that you back up any personal data or, or files that you have on your Chromebook prior to going through the steps in this tutorial. This isn't just because there is a risk of data loss or, or breaking of device and, and whatnot, but it's also because there are several points in this tutorial where we will actively be wiping all the data off the device. So really, back up any important files you have to the Google Drive or to a USB or, or something. Fourthly, I suggest you make a Chrome OS USB recovery drive with a Chromebook recovery utility tool prior to setting up dual boot and installing Galium OS onto your Chromebook. If you mess something up while you're setting up dual boot on the ASUS C302, that USB recovery drive will really come in handy. All right, now that I've gone through the tips and recommendations, let's go to the actual meat of this video. This is how you get a setup that allows you to dual boot Chrome OS and Galium OS on the ASUS C302. 
We start off by enabling developer mode on the Chromebook. Note that enabling developer mode will factory reset slash power or power wash a Chromebook and that you will lose whatever data you have on your Chromebook with this step. So once again, back up your data. If there's anything, if there's any important files on here on the ACC302 or whatever Chromebook that you're doing this with, make sure to back your files up before turning on developer mode. First step in enabling developer mode is to power off the Chromebook. And once you have confirmed that the Chromebook has been powered off, simultaneously hold down the escape key and the refresh key while also pressing down the power button. On the ASUS C302, the power button is on the left side of the device. Doing this will lead to a screen that looks like this. Get past it by hitting Control D. This in turn will lead to a screen that tells us to press the enter key if we want to turn off OS verification. We do want to do this, so press the enter key and the Chromebook will start to reboot. Once it's done rebooting, you'll be met with this screen. Hit Control D here. At this point, the Chromebook will spend a few minutes transitioning into developer mode. Once this is done, you'll be met with this OS verification is off screen. Again, hit Control D to get past it and boot into Chrome OS. Since this isn't the only step that, that will involve factory resetting or power washing the Chrome OS side of things, I'll be using guest mode from here on end instead of logging back in. Now that the developer mode is enabled, we can update slash modify the firmware on the ASUS C302 Chromebook. This involves the usage of Mr. Chromebox's firmware utility. Mr. Chromebox's firmware utility is a really nifty script made by a guy named Matt de Villier, de, de, de Villier, de, de Villier, I don't, guy whose last name I will keep on butchering to the end of the world, so that we'll call him by his other name, Mr. Chromebox. In layman's terms, Mr. Chromebox's firmware utility is a tool that allows us to modify the firmware or flash custom firmware on Chromebooks. Uh, this modification, updating, or, or flashing, depending on what exactly you're trying to do, of custom firmware is done to make it possible to install and boot Linux, or in the case of certain Chromebooks, boot Windows on your Chromebook. It's a really well-made uh, script, and it has a lot of nice features. Like, for example, it, det it the script automatically detects your device and board name. Uh, it detects and shows the current form firmware running on your Chromebook. It detects whether or not you know write protect is on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like all of which is like really, really helpful stuff. If you're doing something like flashing the custom UEFI firmware, the script gives you the option to back up the current firmware prior to flashing the custom firmware, which is really nice in case things go wrong or you want to undo something. Um, you know, it's, it's just a feature packed tool of sorts. And, and, and you, you can tell that Mr. Chromebox put in some real effort here uh, to make the script as user friendly as possible. And, you know, all credit to him. Um, his firmware utility is like a must have tool nowadays if you want to convert your Chromebook into a regular laptop, whether you're going the Linux route or Windows or Windows route. He's, you know, it, it, it's just it's just really good. Back to the steps though, to get Mr. Chromebox's firmware utility script to start running on the ASUS C302 and other Chromebooks, we start by opening up a tab in the Chrome web browser and going to the Mr. Chromebox.tech website. Once at this website, go to the menu or the left sidebar and click firmware utility script. Scroll the page down a bit until you find the script right here and copy it. Once that's done, open a shell window by, by pressing alt Control t on your keyboard. Type in shell and then press the enter key. This should get you a command prompt that looks like this. From here, paste the script that we copied earlier from the mrchromebox.tech website and press enter. This in turn should lead to a screen that looks a bit like this. Press 1 at this step to install the RW Legacy Firmware. The RW Legacy Firmware, by the way, is essentially what allows us to do a boot Chrome OS and Gilliam OS on the Chromebook. As the process starts up, the script will ask you if you want to enable booting from the USB by default. This option can be useful if you intend to install and boot Gilliam OS off of an external USB B drive or a micro SD card or an SSD or, or, or some external storage of some kind. For this video, we'll be partitioning the internal drive and installing Gilliam OS onto the device itself, uh, meaning no external USB storage involved. So we will be entering N here to say that we don't want to enable booting from USB by default. Once the script is done installing uh, RW Legacy Firmware, you'll be given this message saying that the process has been successful. Press enter to return to the main menu. Once you're back to the main menu, press R to restart the Chromebook. 
At this point, assuming that things have gone smoothly, we're done with the firmware aspect of this process and can start on the actual installation process of Galium OS. For the installation process, we'll be using the CHRX script, aka Marshmallow. I don't, I don't really know why it's called Marshmallow, but that's apparently what it's called, but I'll be just referring to it as CHRX in this video, so uh, yeah. The CHRX script will partition the internal drive and then install Galium OS in a dual boot appropriate manner. The script itself is pretty versatile and there's a lot you can do with it. The script lets you do stuff like install certain apps along with the rest of the OS during the installation process. You can specify which release version of a Linux distro you want to install, etc. CHRX currently supports installing Galium OS, obviously, uh, Ubuntu, Fedora, Kubuntu, Lubuntu, and Zubuntu. So you do get some choices in regards to which Linux distro you can install with the script. The default uncustomized script, which we will be using this tutorial, will install Galium OS. There's a lot more to this, but you can read up on what and how you can do these things with the CHRX script by going to the official website. Now back to the step-by-step -step instructions. Once the device has restarted, go back into guest mode and open up a Chrome window. From there, go to chrx.org. Once you're on the page, scroll down to the step-by-step -step section. Find a section called Download and Run CHRX and copy this script. From there, like we did with the Mr. Chromebox firmware utility, open up a shell window by pressing Ctrl-Alt-T. Enter shell and then press Enter. Then paste the script that we just copied earlier. During the first use of the CHRX script, you will be asked how much disk space should we reserve for Linux. This is essentially CHRX asking how it should partition the internal drive. Prior to running the CHRX script, all of the internal drive in this Chromebook is basically reserved solely to be used by Chrome OS which admittedly isn't the most accurate descriptor of all time, but we're trying to keep it simple here. When we run CHRX and choose to reserve whatever storage amount for Linux, let's say for the sake of this example, we, d we choose to reserve 30 gigabytes for Linux. What CHRX does is it resizes or reduces the portion of the internal storage that Chrome OS currently has reserved for its own use. And then it frees up in this case, in the case of this example, 30 gigabytes worth of space in the internal drive. Uh, this newly freed up space is then, through CHRX, reallocated to be used to install Galium OS or whatever Linux distro you're installing with CHRX. Hopefully that description wasn't too confusing. At this step, whatever amount of disk space you give to the Linux side of things will be taken away and be no longer accessible by the Chrome OS side of things. The reason why I'm taking a little bit more time to point this out is because I want you to be careful at this stage. Make sure to not give the Linux portion too much or too little disk space really think through as to how much storage you want Chrome OS and how much storage you want the Linux distro to have within your ideal dual boot Chromebook setup. Whatever amount you allocate to Linux here will be impossible or almost impossible to change or undo later down the line. Meaning that if you mess up here, give Linux too much space, too little space or whatever, you're gonna have to use a Chrome OS recovery USB and assuming you still want to get dual boot going on the ASUS C302, redo the entire process that we just went through to get us to this current point be careful. Also, and I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but the process of resizing the Chrome OS disk space will lead to another power wash of sorts. I know I said earlier that we're going to wipe the device and do these factory resets slash power wash steps a few times, but in case you weren't listening, if at this stage, for whatever reason, you have important files on your Chromebook, back them up because going through with this step is going to wipe out, wipe off all the data on your Chromebook again. Anyway, back to the steps. Uh, for this tutorial, I will be allocating 30 gigabytes of disk space to be used by Galium OS. So uh, enter 30 here and press enter. Wait for the script to do its thing before pressing enter to let the resizing of the Chrome OS disk space occur. At this point, the C302 will pause before seemingly restarting itself. Once the system restarts, you should be met with a screen that looks a bit like this with the words, your system is repairing itself, please wait. The entire process will take about 10 to 11 minutes, after which your Chromebook will start up again at that standard developer mode OS verification is off screen. From there, hit Ctrl D to get past the screen and you'll be brought back to standard Chrome OS initial startup screen. Once again, I'm gonna hold off on logging back into Chrome OS until the process of setting up dual boot, setting up the full whole uh, dual boot setup is done. So I'm gonna go back into guest mode and open up a new window there. Here, we're gonna repeat the CHRX steps that we just went through. Go to the CHRX website, copy the CHRX script, open the shell, enter shell, paste the CHRX script, and press enter. Unlike last time though, since we've already gone through the partitioning steps, the script just gives us a summary of what it's trying to install and the settings that it is trying to install with. 
All this looks fine to me, so I will press enter to confirm and begin the actual installation process. The time it takes for this installation process to complete will depend a bit on which Linux distro you're installing and other factors, but with the default settings, uh, the installation process took about 10 minutes to complete on my C302. Once the installation process is done, you should get a screen that looks like this. This screen gives you a breakdown as to how you can utilize the dual booting feature and how you can choose which OS to boot into. It also gives us our login information for when we boot into Galium OS. I generally suggest that you change your password once you boot up into Linux after this, but you know, you do you. And that's it. The ASUS C302 now has a dual boot setup with Chrome OS and Galium OS. Like the CHRX post installation page says, you can choose which OS to boot into at the previously mentioned developer mode OS verification is off screen, which will pop up every time you turn on the Chromebook as long as you have developer mode enabled. On this page, if you hit Control L, you'll boot into Galium OS. If you hit Control D, you'll boot into the Chrome OS like usual. And that's it as far as the tutorial goes. I hope you found this video helpful in some way, shape, or form. It took a while to make. Um, please hit that like button if it was useful, and thanks for watching.